Alright, uh, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and very good day everyone. Uh, my name is Dr. Amira, you can call me Dr. Amira basically. So I'm going to proceed with the lecture for this week which is uh, I'm going to touch about centrifugation and I guess most of you have run the experiment that involving milk we want to separate between skim and also fat. So if you notice that thing is called a centrifuge which use centrifugation as the main process. So basically, I think you, most of you have the basic how it runs in centrifuge, uh, in centrifuge. So hopefully by you, by listening to this lecture video, you're going to have a better understanding. All right, uh, basically for the, this topic, there are four main contents, which is the first one you need to able to discuss the main concept of the centrifugation itself. The second one, uh, you need to able to analyze the uh, factors that the factors that, that affecting on the centrifugation process. The third one, uh, you need to calculate and evaluate, which is there are three of them, three of the formula you need to know how the uh, you need to know basically in order for you to use centrifuge, and the lastly, actually you need to able to distinguish the difference between two types of uh, centrifuge that uh, available in our industry okay so we proceed <coughs> i guess each one of you have an experience how to run uh, how to turn or how to use the washing machine basically or as you or as we have a lot of problem when you don't have any experience to run a washing machine <laughs> as you know that we use a washing machine to some to a, a dryer or perhaps a dryer to dry up your clothes even even you use washing machine there is a mixing between a lot of water and also your clothes right then you mix together and the clothes your clothes are going to be very very wet if there is no spinning process occur in your washing machine then you are not you are going to have a lot of time to dry up your clothes right so have you ever wondered in your mind what is the process involved when you want to dry up your wet clothes using your washing machine and one process that you not should notice that it's spinning at a high rotation. Am I right? Okay. So when it spin, there is a cause. Uh, there, it, there is a process called spinning. Spin in your setting of your uh, washing machine, right? There is a few few process which is uh, soap, wash, uh, and then what? Uh, lastly, spin lah. Okay. So the spinning is one of the process that use the highest rotation speed, if you notice lah. Okay, so this spinning actually is one of, is a reason why you able to get rid of water from your wet clothes. Okay. So centrifugation, what is centrifugation actually? It is a process or the technique where a mixture of uh, liquid or fluid is separated through spinning according to <coughs> which is particular physical properties. Let's say you have one uh, liquid uh, and then there is a lot of uh, some uh, particles inside. So that particles with different shape and different shape different size and also different mass will give you different <coughs> output of, of right after the centrifugation ends and the sample density which is a liquid density also may <coughs> play a, an important play an important uh, <coughs> effect on your centrifugation process and the lastly your rotor speed meaning how high the speed you need for the centrifugation occurs 
Okay, you need to size the motor later on. Okay, so why we need to consider centrifuge then? Okay, let's say we have two types of particles inside a flow inside the uh, liquid, which is in uh, which is you can see from here, right? <clears throat> so there is one types, one is red and another one is blue. But did these two different particles have different? Have different in terms of size, uh, where you can see the shape is different, and also it has a different than city. Okay, so this thing, <coughs> both of them, if we let them to be uh submerge on the at the end of the, uh, at the bottom of your uh, at the bottom of this flask <clears throat> it may take time because uh, because it takes time because of the gravity because different diversity different way we give you different times of settling all right <clears throat> so this takes time when you want to wait of each of the particles to submerge on bottom of your container. All right. So <clears throat> if we want to uh, decrease the time consuming because uh, in some uh, industrial, we need to separate things in short time. So that is where centrifugation or centrifuge comes in. Okay, so that's why instead of just let it be using a gravity to separate those things, we use centrifugation. So this is what we call uh what we call as centrifuge. <coughs> what it keeps spinning, spinning, spinning at one time. Or centrifuge also a device that able to spin rapidly to speed up the separation process. Okay, basically, uh, the centrifuge have been used uh, since seventeen year or seventy thousand, where we want to separate uh, immiscible fluids between liquid or even gases also can be used centrifuge, but we call it as different name. <clears throat> the example, some of the centrifuge is uh, uh, such a cream from it where you did on your lab, or maybe you can use, it also can be used in clarification, which is you want to remove yeast from a beer. Uh, it also used widely in biospiration, which is in blood, where you want to separate some the platelets, something something like white blood, red blood, because those of the thing have different size, different shape, and different density. So there is where you use centrifuge to speed up your process. Okay, so how it moves because we're using a roto. Okay, you need to size the earth with uh, appropriate roto in order for you to separate your desired particles okay <clears throat> okay so just imagine that this thing is a roto uh, sorry this thing is a centrifuge when you want to this thing is centrifuge where it's keep rotating but in small uh in very slow movement okay so when when it keeps to move or keeps to rotate what will happen is <coughs> there is a particle let's say at the beginning uh t at t zero the particles is at the axis right when it try to when the centrifuge keep moving it tends to move away from the axis Let's say here, something like this. So when it try to move, 
you can see that the particle actually move away from your axis. That is what we call as centrifugal forces. But when it try to move, your centrifuge move, at the same time, you force, you give them a centrifugal forces. Okay? So these are Okay, at the same time, when you you when uh you giving the centrifugal forces on your particles, there are another forces that act thing, uh, in direction which is opposite to your centrifugal forces, where we call it as centripetal forces. Okay. All right, you can understand some. About that, all right. So this one is their velocity, where you the velo the movement of your particles in circular motion. So this velocity actually at a constant lah. All right. So you can see the centrifugal for uh force is outward to the walls. Okay, this is your walls, right? Okay, this is your walls. So centrifugal forces in direction of outward to the walls. But the centripetal is force that acting in opposite direction of the centrifugal. So basically, rate of settling or rate of sedimentation of that particle is proportional to the centrifugal forces. Can you understand after this? <laughs> All right, so there is some derivation uh, in order for you to calculate the centrifugal force, which is we call it as FC. Yeah? So centrifugal force is FC, All right? <coughs> uh, you no need to memorize this, but uh, it's good for you to understand how FC equation is obtained all right sorry okay so as the particle move along the uh move along the uh, axis the particle will experience a centrifugal forces which is outward of the axis <clears throat> So FC, which is, you know, F equal to MA. Okay. So this is your, your general uh, equation for the force. Lah. M equal to mass, A equal to acceleration. But uh, since this movement is in circular motion, then you have to take account uh, the angular, we call it as angular velocity so acceleration in uh, acceleration formula for the particle that move in circular motion we call it as angular velocity okay this acceleration in circular motion so this is how you calculate then you want to, uh, then you substitute. <clears throat> hmm. It's different. This one is A equal to R times, R times uh, omega there. All right. So sorry about that. So angle, angular velocity is equal to velocity divided by radius of the centrifuge. Okay, so you substitute, substitute, this all, all, uh, all based on the substitution, then you simplify there and then you get the <clears throat> formula Fc equal to mv squared divided by r. V is velocity, angular velocity, uh, r equal to radius of your uh, centrifuge lah. Okay. But uh, angular velocity omega also known as 2 pi 
n divided by 60 n equal to revolution per minute which is this is other uh, formula so just straightforward lah okay so substitute 2 in 1 where is 1 okay this is 1 sorry this is 1 okay it gives you fc equal to 0 0.0 one zero nine seven times m r n square. Okay, this is how you're going to calculate your centrifugal force. You need to know the revolution. You need to know the radius of the centrifuge, and also you need to know the mass. Okay, so this is a general. Actually, it's a gen still general. Uh, formula in order for you to calculate the centrifugal forces. Okay. Then, uh, since we know that Fc equal to this value, we compare the Fc with the with the gravitational forces. Okay. We know that uh, gravitational forces equal to mass times gravity. So gravity, you have the average of gravity here. Okay, you substitute and then we got it as this lah. Okay. So by man, FC is means it means that uh, centrifugal forces. This one equal to gravitational force okay next we go to the uh, rates of settling in centrifuge okay this is what type of uh, bowl uh, sorry what types of centrifuge here we call it as tubular bowl centrifuge where the liquids comes from the bottom and then it's separated. You're going to spin inside your uh, uh, centrifuge and it's going to spread it and the out is on top of your centrifuge. Okay, so this type we call it as tubular bowl centrifuge. Okay, so basically this is a common centrifuge that we are using in industrial actually or in lab. The one that you are using in our uh, in our lab is called as this centrifuge, this bolt centrifuge. This one is tubular. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> Actually, there is a video if you want to uh, if you want to know more. So you can uh, you can click here actually. But uh, I will I will send this uh, notes later. Okay. You can just click here and then you can see how why it called it tubular because you can see that when it keep rotating okay this is your axis right this is axis of your tubular bowl is going to <coughs> spin on that axis when you add when this liquid is inside your bowl actually there is a vertical wall that form inside your this is what called vertical the vertical wall okay you can see you can uh clearly see if you going if you go to the link that i given here okay <coughs> all right so what else i want to see uh okay so this one is when it start the particle actually is start from here and it's going to move towards this uh, line lah. All right. Uh, okay, let's say. Okay. At T0, this one is at T0. Your particle is at here. All right. If T final, 
at t final, which is time, your particle is at still at here. It may not to the particle. It may not separate it using your this type of bow. Okay. Is going to go out with your liquid. Okay. The solid can be removed from the liquid if sufficient resident time is enough for the particle to reach the bowl wall. So when you are designing a bowl, a centrifuge, you need to make sure at T final is already being here. It's already to touch at the end of the wall bowl. So that is going to submerge in your bowl centrifuge lah. Okay. <clears throat> Okay, P is particle, R is radius, radius of particle from the axis. Okay, let's say RP is less than R2. Where is R2? R2 is your R2 is your uh, ball radius. Okay. All right. RP equal to, eh, sorry, R2 is radius of your bow. RP is your radius of your particle. Okay. We need to make sure that RP is equal to R2. The radius of the particles is equal to your radius of your bow in order for the effective separation. Okay. At certain time lah. Okay. Uh, what else I need to touch here? Um, because this RP, if it's less than R2, which is your particle, is move at uh, yeah, your particle radius is less than R2, is going to move along together with your liquid, then there is no separation, okay? So minimum RP should be equal to R2 or RP more than R2 so that the separation can be occurred. Okay, how we are going to calculate the terminal velocity? There is two types of terminal velocity which is can use as VT. Uh, one is we call, uh, when we calculate based on gravitational field. Another one we calculate based on FC. So I'm not going to touch how is uh, the equation being derived, but just directly give you this type of the two, uh, two equation that you can be used. Okay, from this one, Vt is settling velocity. Rho p is your density of the particles. Rho is your density of your fluid. Meanwhile, Chi gravitational force. Dp is the diameter of the particles that you want to separate. Sorry, this one is R2 divided by R1. Okay, so there is some de derivation that occurred here. So I just derive this attitude and give you this type of equation. All right, so. So this one is called volumetric lah. Volumetric flow rate of your centrifuge. Okay. 
Okay. So this one, uh, just now we, okay, just now when we explain about the, uh, the radius of the particle and also we compare with the Bohr radius, right? And how we are going to, what equation that actually we can use. So this is where the important calculation come in. So your particles with diameter if less than dp, which is ddp, will not reach the ball wall and leave with the liquid. So means there is no separation. But if your particles is bigger than dp that you calculated here, it means that you able to remove the particle from the liquid. Okay. <clears throat> All right, so this one is based on your particle diameter. This one is a uh, cut point, or we call it a critical diameter. Where sometimes, uh, when a <clears throat> person wants to uh, design a bowl centrifuge they don't want to design the with a big too big of centrifuge or too high velocity of centrifuge so that we can cut costs in terms of electricity and whatsoever so this is where where they are using uh <clears throat> cut point diameter means that uh <clears throat> diameter of a particle that reach half of the distance between r1 and r2 remember r1 is your axis here which is your roto and r2 is your diameter between your roto and also your wall centrifuge This particle move a distance of half of the liquid layer. So let's say liquid comes in from bottom, right? So it calculate the uh, distance, how long the particles can be moved inside your uh, inside your centrifuge. So this is your cut point deep diameter this mean, this means the cut point of your particles fluorid sorry fluorid cut point lah so at fluorid qc particles with diameter greater than dpc which is calculated here we settle down on the wall and be separated from your centrifuge but smaller size of dpc will remain uh, in the liquid which is, is going to go out with your liquid okay when you want to sizing a certain centrifuge you need to consider the flow rate how high the flow rate you need to be how high the uh R1 and R2, which is the size of your bowl needs to be because too big of your uh, bowl also not good because it's going to be very costly. All right. So these are the example. Okay. Let's try. So a viscous, you can read first. Uh, A viscous solution is particle with density rho p is be clarified with centrifugation. So this is density of your solution. Viscosity and then it had given R2 and also R1. It should give you R1. Uh, this one R1 and also height of your 
Ah, bold. So it's asking about critical diameter D PC. Critical PC uh, particles in the exit stream if n equal to uh, and flow rate equal to 0 0.00. 2832. So which of the uh, which of the which of the uh, what we call it which of the formula that you can use in order for you to create to uh, solve this problem. So basically you can use this equation directly for this example. Okay you can try to solve it all right, try to solve it by your own. <clears throat> and the answer should be DPC equal to 0 0.746 micrometer. All right, so try to solve by your own. Let's say, let's see if you can get the correct answer. Okay, next. So, in uh, industry, we are using the two types of centrifuge that have been used widely. One is called a sedimentation centrifuge and second one is filtration centrifuge. <clears throat> uh, what different between sedimentation and filtration actually? So sedimentation, uh, high particles density are pushed towards the periphery of the container, which is called as a wall actually, okay, wall of the container. Uh, some of the example is tubular bowl centrifuge as we, uh, as I discussed just now, tubular bowl centrifuge. And this bowl centrifuge is same as you are using in your lab right now, okay. So they are using widely in production of bulk drugs, separation of blood cells, and also for drug uh, biopharmaceutical analysis. Meanwhile, for filtration, as its name is filtrate, is past a surface of filtration media. All right, the filter catch the solid particles and prevent them from traveling outward of the rest of the liquid mixture. It's something that you have some filter, okay, that capture all the particles that you need to capture. Okay, so these are the examples. So hopefully you can understand up to here. And there is one question actually based on this uh, previous calculation for your Yes, with me. Okay. Okay. All right. That's all from me. So anything you want to ask, you can directly watch at me or you can see directly me. Easier. Make an appointment first. And maybe I can post some short quizzes in Google Classroom. Let's see how. So that's it from me. Thank you. Bye, everyone.